What's up, guys? Welcome to Nolan Talks. It has been way too long since I made one of these podcasts. I mean, last one I made was in February. So it's been a crazy past few months. You know, I've just been really busy with work and got some stuff going on in, in life that are just, you know, I needed to be attentive towards. But, I mean, I'm going to be back now. I'm going to be uploading a lot more consistent, consistently. Um, I like doing this stuff. It's pretty fun. I love talking to LSU. So, yeah, I mean, I love doing it, and you'll be you'll be hearing more of my uh, my audios coming out pretty soon. So, but yeah, let's just get into it. I mean, the past four months have been kind of crazy for LSU. I I tweeted the other day that you know following uh, LSU football is kind of like uh, following a reality TV show. I feel like every week there's just a new story, a new headline about this or that going on, you know, you, you name it. But there's just kind of two things I really want to get into on this audio, and that's uh, first off, James Craig being fired. Um, he got fired uh, this past week, and it was a really weird time for him to get fired. It was right before summer camp. That's kind of unheard of. Um, and what's really disappointing about it is that we basically wasted a sp- our whole entire spring, you know, because – you know, we got five returning starters or six returning starters, and James Craig's the coach, so he's going to be the one with them this spring, you know, working on their technique, working on this new offense. You know, he he's the guy who's going to build that cohesion with them. And, you know, now that he's gone, it was kind of like wasted, which I was watching the Jordy Collada show, and he kind of talked about it and, and described it as it's a really stinky kind of like firing because the timing was just so bad. Um, and – you know, James Craig, I mean, over the, he was at LSU for, what, I think three years? And over the years, I mean, he was kind of that one guy who was kind of the misfit. I mean, LSU kind of did – this past offseason, we kind of got rid of a bunch, a bunch of the old coaches we had and kind of went young. And he was kind of the last coach remaining on the, on the team that was older. I think he's in his 50s. And, you know, his recruiting, his recruiting at LSU was kind of like – well, there's really no great success stories from him coming out of LSU. I mean, I know he got Cordell Thomas and Marcus Dumerville, but, I mean, those guys still haven't seen the field. Um, they were highly rated recruits, but overall, he's kind of just been a three-star kind of guy. And, you know, LSU, we, we, we can't compete at that the top end level with, you know, with three-star recruits. And I know I mean, we, we do have – that does happen, but – you know, where LSU, we, we get five stars in just about every other position besides the offensive line. And over the years, you know, we've had a lot of opportunities, you know, the most recent with Tristan Lee, and, you know, it just doesn't really fall through. Um, in 2019, I know we won, we won the Joe Moore Award for the best offensive line in the country, but I think most LSU fans, we can all agree that there's really no way we were the best offensive line in the country. I mean, obviously that team was so great. You know, winning the, the Joe Moore Award was – kind of like uh, the cherry on top. I mean, that was awesome. We won that award, but I don't really think we were the best offensive line that season. Just everything was just so such a great team that, you know, hey, might as well give them the, the best offensive line because we were so dominant. But, I mean, over the years, he hasn't really developed great talent. I mean, the last one I could think of that got drafted was – I mean, he's had guys get drafted, but like Lloyd Cushenberry was a, was someone who came in, you know, three star recruit. And he plays for the Broncos now as a starting center. He was one that kind of, you know, was a good one. But I mean, overall, just not really great at developing talent. And you know, he just technique wise, I think he just, I think he just a sign of the times, man. He was just a little bit too old for this LSU roster. You know, I mean, he's an NFL guy. He won a Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos. So him. You know, coaching in college, it's just different, man. And that's just, and that's okay. Like, I, that, you know, a lot of coaches are really successful in college. A lot of coaches are really successful in the NFL. Sometimes when they make that switch, it just doesn't really work out. And, you know, that just didn't really work out. And personally, I really just feel like James Craig wasn't really a great hire to begin with. Um, a lot of people say he was like a Coach O kind of guy. Um, you know, he's got that old school fiery mentality. But... I don't really know. I just think that Coach O, once again, struggles with the hires. Um, this James Craig hire wasn't a great hire. Um, I know he won the national championship, Joe Moore Award, but I just still feel like something about it didn't really seem like it was 
kind of I, I don't really want to give him the credit for that. Um, but obviously with this move, LSU was smart about this because whenever you make a high, whenever you make when you fire someone this late into the, you know, well almost the start of the season, you know, we're about, about a month away, two months away from fall camp. You know, you got to make sure you have someone lined up, and LSU did did have someone lined up. We hired uh, Brad Davis from Arkansas to coach the offensive line at LSU, which I don't really know too much about him, to be honest. Um, I do know that he's from Baton Rouge, went to Oklahoma, won a national championship, um, and that's really all I kind of know about him. I, d I don't really think that Arkansas over the years is a great offensive lineman because it's Arkansas. They're not going to recruit at a high level, so – and I don't really know any notable offensive linemen that did come out of Arkansas. So a lot of people are saying, though, that this guy is a great guy. He's a, he's like a fiery dude as well. He's like a young guy. He's got a strong personality. Um, and I really just think that this guy – I mean, he's a younger guy too, so I can't really be upset. I mean, I you got to go young in college football. It's just – it's something that just I, I'll always be happy with because the older guys just can't relate to these young guys. Plus, this guy's from Baton Rouge, too, so I think that's going to be a big impact on recruiting. He knows the area. Um, obviously, it's probably one of his dream jobs to coach at LSU, and he got the opportunity. Um, it's definitely an upgrade from Arkansas. We're paying him more money, and he's going to you know, have a lot more resources than he, than he did at Arkansas. So I look forward to this hire. I mean, there's a bunch of guys. You know, There's Ben Wilkerson, Kevin – I can't pronounce the last name – Mawai – and uh, a few other, I think there's one more guy, I can't think of his name, he was like Rob Sale. They were all LSU guys that, you know, people were saying, oh, they're going to be the next, you know, offensive line coach. But it didn't really work out like that. We hired a guy who coaches in the SEC. You know, he's just, he's in Arkansas, so he's not super far away. And, yeah, I look forward to this hire. I think, I think what's really nice about this is when we fired James Craig, we had someone lined up. I mean, I think it got announced the same day that he got fired that, you know, Brad, Brad Davis is going to be the next offensive line coach at LSU, which is good. That means that, you know, Coach O was making phone calls before, had this guy lined up, which is good. There's not really going to be any drama going. Can, well, I mean, there probably will be. But there's not going to be like, oh, we still got to figure out this offensive line. You know, fall camp starts a month or two away. We kind of got him in as fast as we possibly could, which is good. But still, this guy's got to get – I mean, this guy – I mean, we had a huge recruiting weekend this past weekend. So this guy had to get off the plane – and straight to straight to Baton Rouge and you know start recruiting these young guys but yeah it just sucks that he got that James Craig got fired at such a big you know recruiting weekend we had like a, a few like five star offensive linemen come in and like we're checking out the campus and then oh by the way our offensive line coach the guy has been coaching you for the next three or four years yeah we're gonna fire him so that's that's kind of tough but what can you really do about that I think it was a good move for Coach O I mean Coach O has been like really aggressive this offseason as far as you know acquiring these these talented coaches, man. So let's see if it pays off this season. But yeah, Brad Davis to, to LSU. I look forward to this guy. I think it's I think it's a decent hire. I don't really know too much about him yet, but I look forward to uh to seeing what's up. Also, there's been some crazier stuff going on in this world for LSU. Um it's kinda of has to deal with the transfer portal. Like I like I'm it's been so long since I spoke to you guys, so I'm kind of like, what the heck? Like, I, I wish I definitely uploaded this earlier, but it is what it is. Uh, TJ Finley to Auburn, man, that's a, that's a big one. He was, I think that just, I think, it just kind of cemented his status as he was a third stringer on the depth chart, and you know he's like, hey, I'm not gonna see the field. Um, it's between, you know, Max Johnson, Miles Brennan. You know, Max Johnson's my age, so. You know, when Miles leave, if Miles is a starter, he's got one year. Then Max Johnson's going to be there for the next, you know, few years. So my opportunity to leave is just now. Um, he wanted to stay in the SEC West, which I don't blame him. It's the best. It's literally the best conference in the country. And it does suck that he went to Auburn, though. I mean, I'm not, I'm a little salty about it because, you know, what sucks about it is like this guy, you know, Louisiana guy, you know, loved LSU growing up, all this stuff. Like, he was just meant to be at LSU, and then just things don't really work out at LSU, which is okay. It happens, and then he goes to Auburn. I was a little salty when I saw the news, but it is what it is. I have a friend who actually goes to Auburn, and she was like, TJ Finley, what do you, how do you feel? And I was like, well, I mean, I'm sick about it, but good for him that he's at Auburn. Good for him. He's going to get the opportunity. Um, it just makes sense as far as he's going to see more playing time. 
at Auburn than he would at LSU because, I mean, LSU's got some dogs at the quarterback position for the first time in years. So I really look forward to that. And, you know, Bo Nix is at Auburn, and ah, something just about Bo Nix, just he has not developed like he, we all thought he would over the years. And, you know, I think TJ Finley can come in right away and be a second stringer. And, you know, you're always one play away from getting benched or, you know, getting hurt, which I hope that it doesn't happen to him. But, and TJ could come in and, you know, step up and be the starter for Auburn. So we'll see. Plus, there's a new coaching staff at Auburn, too. So, you know, no one really has these ties to the Bo Nix, like, oh, you're the guy going forward. Like, it's, you know, I assume he will be the starter, but I mean, TJ Finley still has a shot to, get some playing time at Auburn, and it just makes sense. So best of luck to him. Obviously, I'm not going to wish him best of luck against LSU, but best of luck to him. He's a great guy, great kid. I'm sure he'll have success, if not in football, in other aspects of his, of his life. Another crazy transfer, Eric Gilbert. The drama finally comes to an end. So after being committed to Florida, decommitting, uh, rumors he was coming back to LSU, which, you know, Obviously, all the LSU fans were um, geeked about. I thought I was super excited about it. I I was like being like, okay, we're gonna get this situation figured out. Still not 100 sure on his situation. Whether it was, you know, there's just a bunch of rumors that we don't really need to get into. But I was I was like, okay, he's coming back. Our offense is gonna be just filthy now because this dude's gonna be locked in now. His mentally, you know, mental health is back. And then you know, he went on an official visit to. Georgia, and then the tweet drops that he's officially committed to the University of Georgia, which does suck. I mean, anytime you lose the number one overall rated tight end in the history of college recruiting, it's that's a little sickening. Um, but he's going to Georgia. Another stays in the SEC, which sucks. But he's in the SEC West, so I don't think we'll be able to. I don't think we'll play them for the next. Well, unless we're in the SEC championship game, and so is Georgia. But I don't think they're on our schedule for about a year or two. And Eric Gilb was a three-year guy. Let's be honest; he'll be in the NFL in, you know, two years. He's not gonna. He's not probably won't play LSU unless it's in the SEC championship, and I, that's gonna be rough because this guy's a beast and he's gonna be putting up crazy numbers against you know his opponents, and he's just a, mitch, a mismatch nightmare. And I really don't really want to play him, but you know, if we do play him, we do play him. There's really nothing we can do about it. But yes, the drama finally comes to an end. I'm, I was so sick and tired of talking about this guy. Um, best of luck to him. I mean, he's gone through some crazy stuff this past this past year. We all have. But I mean, him as him in just particular, as far as you know, school. You know, his issues he's dealing with outside of school and off the football field. So best of luck to him. Um, I really hope that he's just he's all right. And I I mean, he's gonna make it in the NFL. He's a beast. Like he'll be a, he'll be a first round pick. We can all just call that now. Just physically. He's just an absolute freak. That Georgia offense, man, they're going to, they're going to use him all the time. I, I don't know if he'll be a tight end. He'll just be flexed out. Doesn't really know. doesn't really matter. He's going to see the field. He's going to get the ball a lot. Um, that all that Georgia's offense is going to be deadly this off season, this, uh, this upcoming season. Also another transfer that LSU got was major burns from Georgia to LSU. So I think I was pretty awesome to safety. Played for the University of Georgia this past season. He is from Louisiana, was committed to LSU for a really long time, if I, if I remember correctly. And then I think National Signing Day came and he just slipped from LSU to Georgia. Um, yeah, it's, I think that's, and then he just, yeah, he just decided to transfer back to LSU, just don't really work out at Georgia. He started, I think he played in three games at Georgia. Um, so he's got some experience. He has another year of eligibility. Basically, last year didn't really count. So him coming to LSU just adds depth. Man, maybe this guy steps in. He's a starter right away. I know Mo, Mo Hampton transferred this past offseason as well. Um, hey, that's just more depth. Or, you know, this guy's going to compete for a fighting – start fighting for a starting spot because I mean, he has experience in the SEC. He's played – played at Georgia. has been in the weight room like – Basically, last year didn't really count as far as it, towards his eligibility or anything. So he's just a seasoned veteran coming in. It's going to only help LSU's defense, I think. And I'm, I actually really like this move. I just think it's like a, a 100% win for LSU. Like, I don't think there's like any anything about that major burns coming to LSU that like really hurts anyone's playing time or anything. I just think he's going to come in and potentially start right away and if not he's going to be off the bench and give you great great depth there so i really look forward to that i think that's a great move that lsu's had this past offseason so yeah as far as it goes it's kind of all i have for you guys uh today 
like I said, I'll be uploading more. If you guys are ever interested in, you know, DMing me or chat with me, just hit me up on Twitter at Nolan Talks, N E A U L X T A U L K S. Uh, yeah, hit me up on Twitter. We can DM me, chat, do whatever. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for listening and have a good one.